welcome back to the channel everybody so we're going to continue our discussion about launch control and we're going to cover mainly uh, how Haltech sets it up and why I feel Haltech is superior in what it does um, number one outset video it doesn't take any time for the R33 to get to full boost on the two-step some of this might be because of the compounds. Everything's working well together. But I do think that based on experience, the Haltech just does a better job of integration for launch control and the ECU. So let's get to the data. We're going to start by going to the map. So you have your base ignition map. In this case, we were on C16 already just to make sure it was going to be safe. But if we come down... Over here, we have a tab for fuel correction. And realistically, it's how much do you want to add? I wanted to add 10% extra. Okay, that's easy. Ignition advance, I want it to go to negative 10. Now, unlike the AEM, this is what the actual value is. So, one thing to keep in mind. You can definitely overdo it if you're not careful. But we're going to kind of see how it worked out in this particular car. Now, when we go to the data log, and then we also have RPM. You set your RPM, so it's 5,000 RPM in this case. We could make this 3D. We could do it versus a rotary switch. We could do it versus ethanol content. Honestly, the Haltech does make that kind of endless as far as how we want to uh, go about it. So now when we switch to the data log... You can see more or less the, the same information that we had in the Infinity. And here we also have the time at the bottom. So floor it comes up. We can see that I started from an idle. Uh, so there was real no inertia. 2000 comes up real fast. Now... Looking at this, we have ignition correction total. It's pulling 24 degrees. At this point, it's gotten to negative 1.7. It's built 8.5. And, and as it comes up, it basically locks out at that negative 10. It took negative 25 off the base map to get there, but it's made 22 pounds. Now, one thing that's interesting, actually, it's 22 pounds of EMAP of back pressure. It's 21 pounds of boost. Boost is up here. Um, but as you slide, you can see that the cuts start to come in. It drops just a little bit. Drops to 20. Not really a big deal. But it sits there and it's holding right at 5,000 RPM. If you watch that, it's like 4980, 4990, okay, 5,000. But it just pulls it right down and it really, really holds it to, to that limit close. I didn't have to do any additional programming. That's all Haltech setting that up. Here, towards the end, see 22.2, 22.8 pounds of back pressure. Again, still just the negative 10. Um, some of that, like I said, is probably the compound. It, build, it built really, really fast. But it did that in a really small window of, of time. We, we're talking floored one and a half to really three one and a half seconds to get to 22 pounds. But in the video, it doesn't even sound that long. It's so effortless for, for how it comes into boost. So next, we're going to talk about what I consider just to be a two-step. And that's the generic term for maybe a stationary rev limiter. That's just a fuel cut based uh, two-step. I'm going to switch to a video real quick just to show you what I will use in terminology as a two-step. Obviously, that is probably incorrect. Two-step can be the launch control, but I kind of keep those two apart. To me, launch control is when you do timing retard, when you're doing spark cut, fuel cut, you're actually doing multiple actions at once. To me, the two-step has always just been it's you have a two-step rev limiter, the the traditional domestic name for it, because it was just a ignition cut on a carburetor. So it was just really, you had your main rev limiter at, let's say, 6,500. Maybe you had a two-step set at 4,500. 
most modern cars do that with fuel because it is safer. Like I said, it doesn't load up in the last video. We mentioned that a um, little bit easier on valves. Doesn't make as much power or doesn't make as much boost uh, on larger turbos. You really have to get crazy. So it is less desirable. At any rate, let's switch to a video real fast of one of our customers showing what it sounds like. So to wrap up our discussion on launch control, there are several different ways to do it. You can go really, really nutty. I'm sure we've all seen the videos from the Mideast. My hat is off to those guys. They know what they're up against, but they do it anyway. They make stuff glow in the dark really hard on parts, but you know, it's their lifestyle and they want to show off. I think it's awesome. So they're breaking their stuff, so I don't have to. Good, good on them. Um, we just watched the really, really mild two-step from uh, a stock ECU in an Evo as an example. We've seen some of the standalones. How aggressive you need to be really is going to be based on use. If you're just doing it to show off, you can make lots of noises without being hard on the motor because you don't have to make a bunch of boost, a bunch of torque in order to to get the sounds as we've covered in these two videos you can you can play with things if you're drag racing and you need to be able to leave at full power because it's a sticky track eh, the parts are probably gonna take a beating because you're gonna have to leave at really high boost it's not uncommon for us to leave at 40 45 pounds if the track's there we used to leave in automatic car at 28 to 33 a little, little bit different when you load up against a converter, but again, when you're doing specific application, how you're going to set these tables up is going to vary, but the end result is your reliability is going to go down. So important to keep in mind, I'm not going to warranty anything. I showed you how to do it, but you know, you did it, so it's on you. Uh, that being said, everybody be safe, have fun. Can't wait to get back to a drag strip or racetrack here shortly. Just a couple months already. It's January. So, what, three months, four months? It'll be April. We'll be racing again. Take care, guys.